Hey guys, Scott from the RecordingSolution.com. Welcome to the first video in my EQing with Confidence video series. I want to thank you for signing up or if you're viewing this on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. Let's just dive in. I want to teach you how I view EQ and, and the analogies I use and why I think EQ is so important. I think EQ is the, or if not one of the most important tools you will have in your arsenal because music, mixing music is all about making everything mix together where you can hear things properly, creating energy, um, revealing the good in a mix and taking away the bad. Um, EQ is your first plugin, usually, typically it's my first plugin on a track before I do anything else to it, before I add compression to it, before I add effects to it, I start with an EQ. And I like to view EQ or yourself when you're EQing as a sculptor or a painter. And you're either painting on details or making broad strokes or you're sculpting away, taking big chunks or fine tuning it, little chisels and taking away unwanted frequencies. And what you're adding and subtracting, and we'll get into all that ad additive and subtractive EQ later, but what you're adding is just volume. I like to look at it as like an artistic way because we are working with art, music is an art, and I like uh, feeling like I'm creating this picture, this canvas or this sculpture, but with music and your, tr your job as a mixer is to take the listener on this journey and paint this musical picture and they can close their eyes and they can feel like they're part of the song and they can imagine where they are. So EQ is a powerful tool to kind of create that imagery um, with volume. And so, for instance, this bass track, if, if, if you look at it as like a painter and we're dealing with volume, I view the first step of EQ is the actual fader. So is it too quiet? So then you would make a broad brush stroke, like you were say you were painting a wall in your house and you had this big paint roller and you wanted to cover cover a lot of surface area, you would just do broad strokes. So if you couldn't hear it, you essentially just need to turn it up, right? So if you turned it up where you think it should be um, and it's still not cutting through after you've done the broad paint strokes, then you would need to go in and get more surgical with an EQ. So... And that's how you get into the each individual bands. And this is where you have your, like, if you're trying to take away on one of frequencies, you could chisel away the volume of each band, like a low band, low mids, mid frequencies, and just those areas. Or paint a little bit with the, with the smaller paintbrush and add a little bit of color in just that area. So each band is just essentially turning up or turning down volume within that band of EQ. So the low, the mids, the highs, and all that. So that's the way I want you to think about it. You're just you can either carve pockets away for things to sit in. You can enhance a little bit by adding a little brush stroke here for instance and and just paint that picture. So I want to show you just play you the track. All I have is a, the top row here is just EQ and then just a little bit of compression. Um I just have a little bit of uh, master fader. Um, it's just running through a channel, like a console. A um, little bit of compression and a little bit of tape saturation. No EQ or anything on the on the master bus yet. But right now, I want to play the song and then I'm gonna take away the EQ. So this top row, and then you can hear what it does just with EQ moves. It was my best friend's eighth anniversary We had a babysitter through the night So I stopped off to get a bottle of Jack And a 12-pack of Miller Lite It was an hour drive, so to pass the time Ask my wife for a pull But then I always wind up down on the bed So anyways, you get the idea. I cut away the EQ, it gets muddy, everything gets less clear, 
And when I kick it back on, you kind of everything clears up, everything gets more defined. And that's just with the power of EQ. And I'm not doing any dramatic moves. Everything's around um, three to four or five dB cuts or boosts. Um, nothing dramatic. Go through it. A lot of subtractive EQ, a little bit of additive EQ. But just very, as you can see, very minimal moves nothing crazy here there you go so let's break down the individual knobs let me pull up an EQ and then we can go over them okay so each one of these is a separate band they do the same thing so I'm gonna break down one band and you'll be able to do it exactly the same way on every single band. So the first one you want to look at is the frequency. So this is orange. So here's my orange dot. So the frequency just points the EQ at the fr frequency you want. And so this one only goes so far because it's in the low mids. So it will point it. It's not going to affect the sound at all. It's just pointing to the frequency you're either going to turn up or turn down. Okay. And then this is the gain. So this will either turn it down or we can turn it up. And that's it. And then what they call a Q, I don't know what the Q stands for. I've heard the, I've heard, uh, the name plenty of times, but it's, I never remember it and I don't really care. But all it, do, all it means is the width, the bandwidth, or how narrow or wide you want the cut or the boost. So that's what the Q does, okay? So typically when you're boosting, if you're going to do additive EQ, you would want to do wider EQ bands just because when you're boosting, um, it's more natural sounding to the ear. If it's wider, you're covering a little bit more frequencies than like a narrow cut. and you're, you're, The human ear will be able to pinpoint that a little bit uh, in an unnatural way if you do very narrow boosts. So always think... Um, wide boosts and then if you're doing a cut you can get away with more narrow of a cut because you're just taking away frequencies and when you're when you're doing a narrow cut the cut the philosophy behind a cut is you're just trying to take away the unwanted frequencies not really take and, and leave the rest as is and not really affect the tone of the good stuff you're leaving behind so that's what gain does up or down Q is how wide or how narrow, and then this is just the frequency where you're pointing it at, okay? And typically, your EQs go from 20 hertz, which is super low. I think the human ear can only hear around 30 to 20 hertz, somewhere around there. Once you start getting close to 20 hertz, it's not very audible. Um, it's more of a feeling, kind of, and then all the way up to 20 K, which stands for kilohertz or 20,000 hertz, and that is the super high frequencies, which again, once you start pushing those limits up there, it's kind of hard to hear, um, but it's more of a feeling, I guess. But around this area to, to this area is where we will be working in 99% of the time, 100% of the time when you're EQing. So that's the knobs for each individual band, EQ band. You're either going to turn it up, turn it down, narrow, wider, where are you going to boost it or cut it, okay? And then another cool thing on the ends, you have the low frequencies and the high frequencies. You have you can either do a bell notch, like, like the rest of these in the middle, a bell notch, or you can do like a shelf. So that way you can affect anything, like say you set it at 100, 100 hertz right there, anything below 100 hertz, you can either boost or cut. And the same way with the high frequencies, you can either boost the shelf or cut the shelf, or you can do another notch filter and kind of get you a little bit, one more band that you can mess around with very pinpointed.
And then you have what's called a high pass and a low pass filter. So let me turn that on. And this is very important. So a high pass, it's kind of backwards. A high pass filter means everything that's from, the, here's the frequency knob, everything from like say 120, if you set it right there, 120.7 hertz. Everything that's higher than that, this EQ will let it pass. You will be able to hear it. Everything lower than that, that's grayed out right here, it's going to cut it away and you're not going to be able to hear it. It's going to get rid of it. So it's letting the high frequencies pass. That's a high pass filter. Now, what's a uh, high pass filter is good for cutting out low frequencies that on a track that aren't needed. That's just taking up space and making things muddy. So like say you have your kick drum and your bass drum, which should occupy your low end. And then you're, you're EQing a guitar. Well, your guitars are not going to need to occupy that such a low end from say like 100 hertz down where the bass and the kick live. So you could high pass filter that guitar and get rid of the inaudible frequencies, but just kind of things that make it muddy um, and aren't needed and you can cut it away. So that's one example. And then on the other end, you have what's called a low pass filter and it does the exact opposite of what the high pass filter does. Whatever frequency you set it at, it's gonna let the low frequencies below that frequency you set it right here pass and then cut out all the highs. So that could be good for instance on say you're you have a reverb on a vocal and you don't want the reverb as bright as the vocal so you could like roll off the 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 high end of the reverb to make it kind of sit back in the mix a little bit and just be kind of more rounded and um, and dull and less audible than the actual vocal that you need to have in your face and, and clear you just want the reverb in the background just kind of be an effect or the delay to be an effect you can roll off the high frequencies of that delay that's another example there's many examples you can use high pass and low pass filters on just wanted to kind of briefly um, describe what they can do and these are just your input knobs from the signal coming in and the signal going out once you've tweak these knobs cut or boosted the frequencies so you you would want to keep these at a good level as well what people don't realize is plugins have sweet spots just as like just like the mixing console and the recording levels and and mixing levels um, gain staging that you set up when you're recording and mixing if here's the input and most most EQs have an input and output section where you can monitor it but I like to keep in the digital world for uh, plugins around like the negative 16 area, negative 16, 18 area. So if I had a signal coming into this EQ before I did any of these knobs, mess with any of these knobs, um, and it was coming up hot close to zero, and then that means the output was coming in hot. Well, if I started boosting volume, boosting bands with volume, I'm eating up all my headroom that I have and I'm gonna make this EQ or plugin distort which is gonna sound very bad so if you have an input and output knob just try to monitor where the input and output is and try to keep it at a conservative level before you start boosting or cutting anything and that will set you up for uh, success with the sound of your EQ or any plugin like that so just think about that input and output so that's how you monitor that and a lot of EQs not all have this little button right here this is called a phase flip. Um, if you ever, I'm not going to get into what all the details of what phase is, but if you ever had to flip the phase of something, um, you can find it on my site. I'll put a link in the video how to flip the phase and why you would want to flip the phase. This is the button to do it. It's just a little circle with a line through it. So that is it with, for the philosophy, the way I want, want you to think about EQ and what each knob does. Big are little moves of volume, and that's all we are working with. I hope I clear that up a little bit. Um, stay tuned for the next video. We're going to dive deeper on different aspects and different ways to approach EQ on individual tracks. So Scott from RecordingSolution.com, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't got the the free ebook, please sign up to get the free ebook, and you'll be on the emailing list where I deliver free stuff to you every week. And you won't miss out on anything I put out there. Thanks for watching. Scott from TheRecordingSolution.com. We'll see you next time.